Most people think September's all about harvesting, and there's certainly plenty of that. But there are other key jobs to do this month if you want your garden to keep on giving and to avoid any problems that might carry on over to next season. So join me as we check off 12 essential tasks to complete this month. Late summer or early autumn is a great time to plant a new strawberry patch or add to an existing one. And the great news is it's easy to grow new plants from any you may already have. My strawberry patch here has been badly affected by slugs, so I think I'm gonna to have to relocate it, but first to propagate some new plants from them. After late summer, when the uh, strawberries have finished uh, producing their fruits, they'll often send out these long wiry stems. These are called runners and you can see the plantlets along them here. Well, we can pin these down either directly into the soil or into pots of potting mix to grow new plants. And to do that, I just use thick gauge wire, cut off and then bent into little uh, U-shaped pins like this. Just pin them down and then check on them periodically to make sure they stay pinned down and keep them well watered. These little plantlets should take about a month to root into the potting mix, at which point I will cut them free from the mother plant and then just overwinter them in either my greenhouse or a cold frame to plant out in spring. If you find that your runners have already rooted into the soil when you come to them and you do want to relocate them, no problem, just carefully dig them up, pot them up and grow them on and then uh, just overwinter them to again replant in the spring. There's a simple trick we can use to encourage blemish-free ripening of winter squash and pumpkins. To avoid damp soil rotting the fruit, simply lift developing fruits off the ground and slip a tile or slate underneath so the skin's no longer in contact with damp soil. This reduces the chances of fruit spoiling or rotting. As the end of the growing season approaches, why not take your self-sufficiency up a gear by saving your own seeds? I'm still picking these beans right now, but towards the end of the month, I'll allow some of these pods to fully mature so the seeds, the beans, can fully plump out and ripen. I'll then leave them on the plant to go to a straw color and go all papery, and then I will shell the beans and bring them indoors to continue drying. It's easy to save seeds from the likes of beans, tomatoes, peppers, and lettuce. Some vegetables like onions, leeks, chard, and carrots won't produce flowers and seeds until the following season. So to save seeds from those guys, you'll need to allow a few plants to overwinter so they can flower and you can save seed then. Now this is well worth doing if you have the space because self-saved seed is obviously cheaper and it's gonna be super fresh and raring to grow. It's a time of transition in the productive garden. In the next few weeks, many crops will be coming to an end. And as they do, it makes sense to clear them as quickly as possible to the compost heap so that other crops can get in or you can get in and improve the soil. After clearing your crop, just go through and pick through any traces of the old crop along with any annual weeds that have snuck in. These are great fodder for the compost heap. With everything cleared, you can then add some organic matter and aim for a depth of at least an inch or three centimeters if you can. And I'm using well-rotted manure for this. And then if you like, add your next crop. And I'm planting some beautiful chard that will give some lovely pickings throughout the winter and obviously on into spring too. One vegetable worth making space for is spring maturing cabbage because it actually benefits from the frozen conditions of winter, which makes the leaves sweeter. Plant seedlings now about 12 inches or 30 centimeters apart in both directions. Don't forget to net your plants against pigeons if they are a nuisance in your garden. Once evenings turn cooler, begin shutting greenhouse doors and windows by late afternoon if you can to trap the daytime heat for longer. The same goes for cold frames, mini greenhouses, or indeed any covers you use. It only takes a moment and will help to speed up the ripening of the likes of peppers and tomatoes before the season comes to an end. Have you ever considered sowing a cover crop or green manure? 
They are great because they can help to add to soil fertility, suppress weeds and improve soil structure while nothing else is being grown. What cover crops are suitable for sowing this late in the season? Well, that depends on how harsh the winters are where you're gardening. In my temperate climate, there's still time to sow mustard, winter tares or vetch, grazing rye and field beans. Some cover crops can even be sown in amongst already established crops. And here I'm sowing some nitrogen fixing trefoil in between my kale. These will form a nice little mat. And then when the kale's done and lifted, they'll still be there. And then I will dig it in uh, at the beginning of spring, ready for the next crop to enjoy all that extra fertility. I love cover crops. They're an incredibly no fuss, low tech solution. And they're a great way of adding goodness to the soil when you can't quite make enough of your own compost like most gardeners. Dig up the last of the spring planted potatoes before the slugs get at them. Cut back the foliage, then dig up plants on a dry day. Leave them on the soil surface for a few hours until the skins are completely dry, then store them in breathable sacks kept somewhere cool, dark and airy. Summer is a time of abundance. There's just so much to be harvesting. It can hardly be called a job now, can it? Popping out and picking, pulling and plucking. Well, it's why we garden, isn't it? Warm season staples like tomatoes, beans and zucchini or courgettes will only continue producing if you carry on picking them. I'm in the equivalent of zone eight, which means the end of the growing season, well, it's not far off now. And I want to indulge in as much garden growing goodness as possible before things slow down. The end of the growing season may be in sight, but while the harvest is still coming thick and fast, this is a good opportunity to preserve some of this bounty to enjoy later on. There are lots of ways to do that, of course, canning or bottling, freezing, or perhaps dehydrating to capture some of that lovely essence of summer to enjoy in the colder months. Let's pickle some of these cucumbers. I've sliced the cucumbers into fairly thinnish rounds, and now I'm just packing them into these heat proof canning or mason jars. And then I'm going to leave about a half inch or centimeter of headroom at the top and that's to allow for the briny pickling liquid to get in there. We don't want the cucumbers poking proud of that. And now for that pickling liquid. Into a pan goes a cup of distilled white vinegar, next a cup of water, a tablespoon and a half of salt. I'm using a pickling salt, a quarter cup of sugar, a few cloves of garlic, and a tablespoon of peppercorns. Get this bubbling away to a rolling boil till everything's dissolved. And then once it's cooled off a bit, Pour it into the jars, ensuring some of the peppercorns and garlic also make it into each jar. Let's screw on the lids and then just leave these to cool down for about an hour. And now it's in with a few sprigs of garden dill and we've let it cool down so that the dill doesn't cook and it stays nice and fresh and green. Just work it all the way in if you can. We maybe put about three sprigs into each jar. And then to finish off, because I absolutely love a good hit of heat, I'm putting in a teaspoon of chili flakes. Now that might be a bit hot for some people, but oh, I love a bit of spice. And then pop our lids back on, and then these can go into the fridge. The pickles will be good to eat within a couple of days, but let me tell you, the taste only improves with time. And these refrigerator pickles should last for at least a couple of months. If you'd like to learn more about canning or freezing, then do check out our videos on that, links in the description below. Hedges and shrubs have put on tremendous growth over the summer. Mine are certainly in need of a trim, especially where they're getting in the way of paths or overhanging growing areas. Trimming hedges doesn't just keep them tidy, it helps to keep them nice and dense too, which will make them better at filtering out air pollution and dumbing down the background noise from the likes of traffic. Birds have usually fledged by this time of year, but just make sure and double check looking for any active nests before cutting. You can rake up your clippings, but perhaps easier is just to lay down some old tarpaulin to collect the clippings, and then you can just bundle it all together and drag it off to the compost heap in one go. I'm going to be using a cordless hedge trimmer for this job, but you could of course use hand shears and pruners too. Now this is really soft growth, 
but if it was anyway spiky and liable to fly back at me, I'd have some protective goggles on. And it's always a good idea when using powered tools to wear proper gloves and sturdy boots as well. Trimming is different to full on pruning. I'm just cutting into new growth that's less than a year old. All I'm doing is skimming along the edge here to cut away all this straggly growth. You could use a string line if you wanted to make a neater job of more formal hedges. And it's a good idea to step back from time to time to check on progress and finish off the sides before then going on to the top of your hedge. And with these shrubs towards the back of the vegetable beds, I'm just cutting away any overhanging branches to let in as much light and air to the growing areas as possible. And there's still time to sow a surprising number of crops, including winter hardy salads and Asian greens. These guys are super fast to germinate. This lot was sown only last week and they are already up. They'll be ready to plant in another week or so. And as happy coincidence would have it, we did a video on sowing and growing winter salads just last week. So if you missed that, catch up now and I'll catch you next time.